Brothers of Invention, singer Esther. And we got to get something straight because people don't believe it. How old are you? I guess this is it. This is it. I have to you reveal have to the reveal. truth. Well, we, we know so, you were with Frank I mean, Zappa in the 60s. Let me lead up to how old I am. Okay. Because, you know, I've always thought about what do you do? You know, do you, do you lie? And I'm about the truth. And I think the 60s was about the truth. And um, so I guess I have to tell the truth. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I would not be presenting... You know, I'm, you're not supposed to ask a lady her age, but we know <laughs> you were in the 60s with Frank Zappa. Right. And we know you were not three or four years of age when you were singing no, with I him. No, I wasn't. Fine. Therefore, <laughs> by process of, of deduction, you, you know, you're just amazingly young. I'm not a masher. I'm just saying that. You are. I am 43 years old. There you go. Is that amazing? <laughs> you are the youngest looking 43-year-old uh, that we've ever had on this show. No, really, you're... Well, and, and I think it's something that anyone can do. I think that anybody can stay young uh, much longer than they do. And I think that the reason that people age sooner than they have to is because they expect to age. They expect because they see everyone around them. And I think that in these days, people need to stay younger longer because life is so complex. It, it isn't just a matter of putting on a tie-dye and a peace symbol. I don't think so. But <laughs> forever young, 1981, you toured with the Jerry Garcia Band. This is true. The, about the same time... You were did about an album with Bobby and the Midnights. Well, no, I wrote a song. With you wrote Bobby a song on that album, and that's Bob Weir, right? The song and Jerry Garcia, and they are the Grateful Dead. This and nothing goes on and on and on in America like the Grateful Dead. Tell me all that you know. I'll show you. I think he provides something. I think they all do. First of all, they're all incredibly nice people. And but, but there are a lot of nice people who disappear. It's got to be more than that. Well, they're a strange phenomena because they're more of a live band than a recording act. And a lot of, you know, the, um, how you say, the musicians in the business that are very arrogant uh, don't, because the Grateful Dead aren't really known for their great recordings, they put them down a lot. Mm -hmm. But the people enjoy them because they present something live that, first of all, they're a good time band. They're still, they're good time music. And I think that that's very rare because most of the stuff out there is very negative and very complainy. And, um, and I think that they're always out to have a good time and, and they share. Somehow they have that good time right on stage and so everybody in the room has that good time with them. The, the Grateful Dead audience is the most polite audience that you'll ever see anywhere. I mean, I think, and, and, and maybe it's the 60s. Maybe the 60s have stayed with us. They've stayed with you, yeah. and they've stayed with Jerry Garcia and, and, and Bob Weir. And, and maybe there's a little bit of the 60s in all of us. I like to think that. That at least now has only come out um, through the dead. You were never a deadhead yourself. No, I wasn't. I, I met them long ago. I met them when I was in the Mothers. And uh, I always like them, and whenever I see them, it's always very friendly. But it's, it's different, I think, when you're actually in the same industry with somebody, you know, how you feel. You can meet them as people, and you either like them as people or you don't. I do, anyway. I'm, maybe I'm the one who's different. But um, I know that when I do hear them play, and I do even hear their recorded music on the radio, I, I have to say, it sounds like fun. You know, if I just listen to it just for the feeling that it gives me, it sounds like fun. Well, maybe we've got a deadhead here on the phone. It's Daryl in Michigan. Yes, how are you doing? I'm a first-time caller, but uh, uh, the things that I've seen on the shore are fantastic. Uh, I'm a part of that uh, Vietnam War era uh, student unrest, uh, ecology, uh, Woodstock, that type of thing. Uh, I must say that uh, your guest looks like a 21-year-old individual. And <laughs> we all agree to that, Daryl. <laughs> Have you got a question for him? My, my question is this. Uh, do you see today's artists doing more or less creative work as it relates to the times? In other words, do you find today's recording artists, and those who are in the business, uh, living in the shadow of yesterday's artists as it relates to cause-oriented music? Well, absolutely, except I don't, I don't even think they're living in the shadow. I don't even think they're even thinking about yesterday, uh, or let alone tomorrow. Uh, I think, first of all, the recording artists, the word artist is used, uh, I use the term loosely because everyone else seems to. An artist is someone who creates 
something, you know, creates art. And I think that most of the people in the music business today, or your, your artists, are, are not. They are the art, if you want to call it art. They're created. Uh, uh, you know, they're put together. Uh, the producer kind of puts them together with writers who put their material together. In the 60s, a lot of the people who recorded, and, and my, myself included, were people who had something to say and had music that, that came with them. I have music with me. And these people, they, I, they have, what they have is uh, the look, you know. They, ha they don't have to be able to sing. They don't have to be able to write. They don't have to have anything to say. Uh, in fact, the less that they have with them, the more people that can earn money around them. Because I, think, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the word artist used for musician came out of the country and western field. I think because they felt so sort of self-conscious mm -hmm. and people always looked down. Hmm. And I think that's, that's where that word started. Really? Yeah, I believe so. I thought it was because it was recording artist. Yeah, well, I think but and it was used first time, I believe, more in the country and western field than anyone else. It sort of made them feel uh, a little bit better because everybody looked down on them just as pickers and strummers. They were artists. Right. right. We're going to take a break uh, right now, and we'll be back with Ezra in, uh, in just a moment.